Fellowship of Fairness and Forgiveness. My confession dates back some 19 years to when I was a young and carefree eight-year-old in primary school, okay, primary four of the local Bass Street Academy. That's where I am. We're partway through the school year when World Book Day approached, and uh, in Assembly one Friday, the headteacher announced a drawing competition involving the whole school. Each of the 350-odd pupils were given an A4 sheet of paper with a rectangle taking up three quarters of the page. Inside of this rectangle, we were instructed to come up with an image that, if chosen, would be printed and made into bookmarks in celebration of World Book Day. Wow. To say I was excited was an understatement. I love to draw, said Terry. And what eight-year-old doesn't want a bit of healthy competition between them and every other pupil in the school? I raced home that day, ran up to my bedroom, took out some scrap sheets of paper on which to practice, grabbed my best pencil and... Well, sort of nothing really. I hadn't the foggiest foggiest idea what I was going to draw. Inspiration had completely abandoned me and I just sort of scribbled aimlessly. I pondered this dilemma out loud at the dinner table that night and I I needed a friendly character to engage the judges. That's what I was trying to think of. Uh, The judges were actually just the Bash Street members of staff, but, you know, you've got to impress them anyway. And I needed a catchy slogan. It was at this point that my mum piped up, Why don't you draw an owl? like the one on your bedtime storybook. Well, the owl in question was sitting on a branch with little half-moon spectacles somehow resting on his beak, holding a book of bedtime stories in front of three baby owls. As I was still suffering from designer's block, I reluctantly agreed. After all, there was nothing in the rules explicitly saying that we were forbidden from plagiarising pre-existing storytime characters. I set to work and my first practice attempt was pretty abysmal Uh, and my second practice attempt was even worse Uh, but come the closing date for entries i had a fair bid for submission to the contest i even had the all important catchy slogan which was at bash street any time is story time Mm. what do you think of that as a slogan does that work I think it's a, it's a lovely idea. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> but, I think but in practice, but, yeah. maybe not. Can we have a story? No, <laughs> it's maths. <laughs> it's not. Anyway, that was the slogan that I came up with, said Terry. A week or so after the entries were collected, we had a school assembly. The head teacher strode forward, clutching half a dozen sheets of paper. Did my eyes deceive me? Was that my owl in amongst the select few in her hands? She read out the names of the winners in ascending order, holding each entry aloft as she did so. An older boy in primary six was fourth. My best friend Sarah was third. This was getting serious now. I could see my owl still in her pile of papers, but she hadn't called my name. Had my dream come true? Had I actually literally totally won? My heart skipped a beat when she read out the name of the second place winner. I think I've come first, I whispered to the girl sitting next to me. Just like that. My dream became a reality. To rapturous applause, I was invited to the front for a handshake and a photograph. But the real prize was still to come. My design, from then on affectionately known as Barney Owl, was printed onto hundreds of bookmarks, with other pupils in the school receiving one each. I was the talk of the school, and older pupils I didn't even know were giving me congratulations in the corridor. My teacher, Mrs Howler, gave me ten extra stamps on my chart that week. That's how good I was. It meant I was definitely in line to get a poly uh, a polycop. Uh, I was definitely in line to get a lollipop on Friday. What a life we were living! And to my surprise, whilst on my way back from the toilet about a week later, the head teacher bumped into me in the corridor, and I was invited into her office, where I got to choose a book all of my own as an extra prize. Could life get any better? Sometime later, after the initial hubbub had subsided, I was met with a dizzying sight. There in the media room of the infant primary section, it's a media room, was a seven foot tall, very animated and equally terrifying Barney Owl. Yes, seven foot tall. Not only had the school embraced my catchy slogan of any time being story time, which is clearly not true, but they'd also purchased a large owl costume and roped someone in, presumably the janitor, Mr Teasdale, to wear it... <laughs> For the whole school, particularly primaries one, two and three. This was getting a little out of hand. 
and I don't think Mr Teasdale liked me either. Not least because they were still blissfully unaware that I had plagiarised the idea for the friendly owl from my storybook, but that they were equally and more importantly unaware that, actually, my mum had drawn the whole thing in the first place. You see, Father Simon, not only were my first two attempts terrible, but every single attempt following that was terrible as well. My mum, just in passing, and as parents tend to, said... Here, I'll have a go. <laughs> and she drew a beautiful yeah. version yeah. of the owl I'd come to love and detest in equal measure. She even came up with a catchy slogan. My entire input was assisting with the colouring in. It's all I did. So the forgiveness is clearly not from the teachers who I so wickedly deceived because I didn't actually get the bonus lollipop that week thanks to a girl who'd done amazingly in her arithmetic. Nor do... Uh, probably got her dad to do it. Nor do I seek forgiveness from my best friend Sarah who was one of the runners-up. I told this very tale to her just a few years ago and she in turn confessed that her dad had drawn the entry. The entire thing was a farce. Now I seek forgiveness from... Primary one, two and three, who had to be subjected to the terrifying ordeal of being made to read by a gigantic, monstrous, crazed owl, who was really Mr Teasdale, and also whoever the poor soul who was Mr Teasdale had to dress up as the crazed creature. No one ever forgave me as far as that was. Imagine being taught to read by a seven-foot monster owl. You're, it might put you off reading. Maybe that's the problem with some people reading. I was taught to read by an owl, and therefore I've never picked up a book since. There are many, many stories like this of homework, which I think has been done by parents. Let's see what Sister Bobby makes of that. Um, I think in his circumstances, it's, uh, I can see a road to forgiveness because of this. Is Basically, it was the whole school. So you're pitching a kind of little ones and against the older ones. So I don't think the rules are very fair. It's not they had different stages. So obviously the best artist is going to win. So I think if you've got a kind of four-year-old or five-year-old and they've got to go up against the 11-year-old, that doesn't seem to be very fair, does You've it? Gone are you going to so forgive? I think, no, I just think because I think the rules are not very fair. I don't think it's very even. I don't think it helps anyone. So basically, best parent wins, I think, who gets involved here. So in this case... I will forgive the cheating. All's fair in love and war. Life but also, is... it was still your ideas. You don't have to be the best artist to have the best artistic ideas, do you? No, Generally. Well, yeah, I'm <laughs> no, yo-yoing. I'm yo-yoing on this one, not for a change. I mean, it's justification from Sarah. She sought that. I didn't agree with that. That sounds, sounds like a David Williams novel, doesn't it? <laughs> but um, I think, really, the reason I'm going to forgive is that anyone who has a mother with a voice that deep... <laughs> I'll give it a go. Yeah, then uh, they have to be forgiven. She put the basking, fear of God into me. I'm just basking in the success of all my accents from yesterday, uh, and so I'm just on a roll. I can. There's, yeah. there's no voice I can't achieve today. Mm -hmm. That's that's. Be well, that challenge. really. Yes, our own Mike Yarwood. There's nothing wrong with a bit of aimless scribbling. Uh, and Terry, uh, well done. And right. for some of the accents, you're forgiven. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, Matthew. Then. I'm sure I speak for the nation when I say there's only one thing worse than other kids, and that's the parents of other kids. And we all know in school that, 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 that little Timmy, when he's done his collage, that's not little Timmy's work. That's very much chartered surveyor and part-time <laughs> artist Miriam, who has done Timmy work. So, uh, frankly, I'm going to forgive, because everyone's up to it. They're all up to it, uh, apart from me, obviously, obviously, very much playing by the rules.